All right, so I get a lot, a lot of questions about what colors I use for a frame, what, what, like, fat, uh, cyan Donna or for builds, stuff like that. I get, I get a ton of questions on those videos, and I'm just gonna answer all those questions in this video because I don't feel I really don't like repeating myself, especially to that many people who commented the exact same thing. So. I'm going to go over ash. ash. Everyone's been asking for my ash colors. All right. So what I have here is a nice 50%, like a sort of 50% gray here with the smoke colors. I have the deep black with smoke colors as well. We got the red uh, from the Halloween pack. That's the red I use. And now the gold, the gold is the exact same as the default gold uh, for most prime frames. Although I think I made mine a little bit darker. So if I just change that, yeah, I made mine a little wee bit darker. And then smoke uh, for energy color, classic saturated again. I go for that that dusty looking gray, mainly because it's just smoke bomb looks better with the uh, with that energy color. Those are my ash, my ash prime colors that people have been wanting to know. Uh, I have the Kogay skin, or so basically those uh, colors, but I have them flipped in different orders. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the emblem here is my clan emblem, so don't don't worry about that too much. Now for Avara, I always get asked what sign Donna and what colors I'm using and what build I have on her. So let me let me just show you. So for some reason, some of the animations won't animate for some reason. I don't know what's up with this, but. Like, I don't know what's up with it, but it doesn't matter. Alright, so this Cyan Donna is the Celestial Cyan Donna you get for PvP. And where you get it, let me show you how you get it. So let's go to the relay here. Alright, so to get this Cyan Donna I have, what you need to do is go over here to Teshin. Alright, so what, after that, what, uh, what you need to do is become mass, uh, max rank... Uh, with him uh, for PvP, and then after that you need to get a hundred K rep, and then that's how you're able to get the sign down. Now the sign down it does light up, uh, and it lights up for every challenge you complete, uh, weekly challenge or any challenge at all. So if you do a challenge, a pillar lights up. Uh, um, these two pillars light up. If you do like another challenge, uh, these side ones light up, and then if you do another challenge, these these ones light up, and then if you do an like I said, another challenge. The whole thing lights up. And that's how you get uh, the Cyan Donna and how you get it to light up. Now, uh, Conclave Rep, the easiest way to get Conclave Rep is just to do challenges and weekly challenges. Weekly challenges, at the end of the weekly challenges, you get a guaranteed 50,000 reputation from uh, Teshin here. At the end of it, in weekly challenges, you get, you get uh, also 10... Of a random rare resource, I think the only thing he doesn't have is con he doesn't. The only thing I haven't seen him give away is control modules, so you don't have to worry about just getting fucking control modules. Uh, he also gives you he'll give you a random weapon stance, and he can give you like rare stances like Ventral Revenant, Temple Royale, stuff like that. And I've gotten four riders from him, so yeah, he can give you rare stances, and he also gives you some credits as well. I forget. Now the credit, I think he gives you about ten thousand credits, anywhere from ten thousand to one time I got a hundred thousand from him, but that was just one time. And obviously, these challenges are kind of kind of obnoxious, but they're easier uh, once you do like say the daily ones. Uh, and generally, the ones you probably want to do are the team annihilation ones and the annihilation ones because that's what people play. Not a lot of people. No, there's hardly any people that play uh, Cephalon Capture. And almost no one plays Lunaro now, especially in, in the fucking U.S. servers. So, yeah. Definitely want to go with that. Or what you probably want to do is if you have a friend, go into a public match and just grind uh, challenges with him or, or get a group together in recruiting chat that wants to just grind Conclave challenges. That'll be a pretty effective way to do that, too. But, anyways, that's how you get the Cyan Donna. And now... For the Avara build that everyone wants to see. So, people were asking me how I stayed invisible for super duper long. 
So I'm going to show you, not this build, it's so, okay, so I'll show you the build I used in that one video. Alright, I believe it was something like this, I've changed this build a whole lot, but this is what I was using, I was basically running a lot, uh, a lot of uh, range, a lot of efficiency, and a lot of duration, and obviously, you definitely want Prime Flow because Avar has very, very low health, but she has a very, very high power pool. So obviously, Prime Flow is a must. Uh, if you don't have Prime Flow, you can obviously use the normal flow. I mean, you lose more than 200 energy, but still. It, it's an okay alternative. And so, one of Avara's abilities is called Prowl. And what Prowl is, is uh, it's a toggled ability uh, that makes you invisible uh, for a period of time. So just like Mesa's Peacemaker, sort of like um, how it like drains energy per second. Uh, well, Avara's Prowl does the same thing. I can stay in invisible for as long as I have energy. The more you move with this ability, the, m uh, s the more energy it drains. But it doesn't matter too much. That's why I use Prowl. Prowl's best invisibility. If you want to just get, like, play it safe, do safe stealth stuff. Uh, her, also, her, uh, one, uh, her, one of her arrows for her first ability also does uh, that as well. I forgot forgotten power strength on this build simply because I'm going to be using arrows most of the time instead of Artemis Bow. Now, I have a build for Artemis Bow, which is right here, where I just forgo range uh, because uh, uh, and go for power strength because that obviously affects the damage of Artemis Bow. So does your main weapon mods. And obviously, the multi-shot is also affected by multi-shot on your weapon mods as well. So, yeah. That's why I use, if I'm just, I generally take this into a, def a void defense mission. Because simply it's really good at spawn killing enemies in the void. But I only use that in void defense. And this is what I use for spy missions, uh, team spy missions generally. If I'm not running a spy mission solo for whatever reason, then this is what I'd use. Uh, mainly so I can make zip lines and cast arrows on people. And, and also use Artemis Bow and have a decent amount of strength to it. And that's a sort of a balanced build. But yeah, this is what I use and Prowl's the ability that makes me invisible for super long. Alright, so if you want to join the clan, here's the deal. I'm only accepting active members into my clan at this moment. I can't allow just anyone to be in the clan at the moment. And here's why. So I just got done kicking a good 70 people out of the clan because I haven't played in about a year since they've joined. And the thing is, the clan, uh, once a new weapon uh, is uh, uh, implemented, it sometimes is, is uh, put in the clan dojo to build. Like for instance, the Okina, or even uh, the Arcwing got moved here and Neja got moved here as well. So where's Neja? There he is, Neja got moved here too, instead of being a sortie thing. So, when that happens, uh, I need um, materials to say build a weapon. So let's take the let's take an item like the Elytron Wings Research. All right, every part you need to research and you need to throw in and contribute materials so the research can be put out into the part. This way, uh, once the research is done, I can be able to grab a blueprint for this. Here's the problem with this though. All right, so at base, the Elytron Ring Wing uh, research costs 10,000 credits, one field drawn, 6,450 cryotic, 12,500 polymer bundles, and one tellurium. That's at base, base level clan. However, the higher your clan tier, the higher these research costs are. So basically, I cannot afford to have people just being in the clan and not contributing to these because that, that higher clan count is supposed to make up for those, the research deficit here. So I had a storm clan, but I reduced the clan tier to a shadow clan simply because the research cost was too damn high. Once, if they're at Stor storm clan, the the wings cost uh, 10 times what they are at base. And say, if I were to, and since, and at, at the time, my clan was actually full and I needed to upgrade to a mountain clan. To, which increases the research costs to 30 times what it is at base. And if I was to upgrade to the final tier, which is Moon Clan, it, they would be at 100 times they are uh, at base. 100 times. That, that's ridiculous. So, and I've, since no one was really contributing, 
to any of the research except me because I was doing this all by myself. I had no choice but to kick people out of the clan because the research costs were just getting too expensive and I couldn't farm a good 100, uh, 120,000 polymer bundles by myself. That's a lot. That's too much. And it, it took me a good while to get even halfway. In fact, I was at halfway yesterday. And, I, and that's when I made the decision, I'm just fucking, I'm just gonna down, downsize the clan because no one's contributing. It's all, and I'm only getting higher, higher research costs, which is honestly halting my mastery progress. So, yeah. If you wanna join the clan, you, you need to be an active member and contribute. However, my clan is full at the moment and I don't see a further reason to upgrade since no one is contributing. And stuff like that. So I kicked, I kicked out a good 70 people for that. Because it's just like, I, the research costs are too high. And it's just, if you're not contributing, I can't, I can't afford to keep you around. So, if you're not going to contribute to any of the lab research, I, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't afford to keep you around. So I have to let 70 people go. Uh, but that's, that's what the clan situation is. I have a Discord for the clan. Uh, that's all, that's free to join. That doesn't have a member limit and it doesn't raise any costs. So if you want to join the clan discord, by all means do so if you want to, or just join my discord server in general. Sure. Uh, I get notifications on my phone, so I'll, I'll, I'll see when you guys are actually chatting, but there's only one person there at the moment and no one ever, no one talks there except for me. And I like to make out some announcements there, but yeah, that's the that that's all the questions mostly that I get that I get frequently asked a lot. So anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed that little mini rant there, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.